Uh, it's six o'clock, and I'm going to call this meeting of the Village Board of Trustees to order. Will you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Okay, thank you very much. Um, we'll begin with mayoral appointments. Um, Anthony, would you like to read these? Good evening, sir. Please. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Whereas the village of Southampton has a vacancy in the position of police officer. Whereas John Singer has the served the village of Southampton with distinction as a part-time police officer and whereas officer Cigna mm -hmm. placed second on a civil service eligible list for the position of Southampton village police officer. Now, therefore be it resolved that John Cigna mm -hmm. is appointed police officer of the Suffolk County eligibles, eligibles list 23 dash five zero zero two dash zero zero three dated February 23rd, 2024 subject to a successful completion of a probationary period established for the position of police officer by the County of Suffolk and be it further resolved that officer Cigna will be compensated with an annual salary of $65,644.06 effective March 22nd, 2024 IAW Southampton Village PBA contract. Okay, I will make the motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Okay. So, do you have anything you'd like to say? Oh, here he goes. <laughs> Officer Skanka, please come so to the you want him? podium. No, the you podium here, him. please. <clears throat> I would just like to thank the board and the mayor and the chief for this uh, amazing opportunity. And I look forward to going to work. So, thank Excellent. you. So, and, and we will swear, swear you in uh, next Friday at 9 a.m., which is, I think, your first day of work. Yeah, officially in this capacity. Officially. You've been a, uh, uh, you know, a, a part-time officer with us, right? Uh, and we have appreciated uh, you here in the village, and I think it's great that you did so well on the uh, civil service exam and that you'll now be able to join the force full-time as a full police officer. Thank you. All right. And you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> you're, you're released. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Second one, Mayor Manger appoints and requests a motion for the Board of Trustees to approve Julie Crudop to be appointed to the position of treasurer at a salary of $91,000, effective Friday, March 15th, 2024. I will make the motion. I second it. Any discussion? No, glad to have Julie in that position. She's been doing a great job, and I'm sure she will continue to do so. Excellent. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, can I just Sage, was um, Trustee Stevenson going to be joining us? I can't think of any idea. Okay. I just want to make sure he gets patched in. Okay. All right. Continue, Anthony. Next. Thank you. Mayor Manger appoints and requests a motion for the Board of Trustees to approve the following position. Planning Commission, Jeannie Sterolas with a term expiring June 30th, 2024, vacancy, Michael Angelo Lieberman. Resolved. The Board of Trustees accepts letter of resignation from John Necknez yes. as a member of the Tree Commission. Yeah, hold on. I think we probably should yeah, uh, make a motion to, uh, I'll make the motion to appoint uh, Jean Strudulis to the, uh, the Planning Commission. Uh, is there a second? I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Roy. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we'll All go right. on to uh, so we're gonna move the, on the to next one. Uh, you, the, the letter of resignation from John Necknes. I will make the motion to accept his letter of resignation from the Tree Commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Thank Excellent. You. Move on to the next one. Mayor Manger appoints and requests a motion for the Board of Trustees to approve the following positions. Tree Commission, Anthony Piazza, with a term expiring June 30th, 2024. Uh, I will make the motion. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Resolved. The Board of Trustees approves a request to update the term expiration date for Peter Grealish, member of the Tree Commission, to read June 30th, 2025. This expiration date will align with our village committee appointment cycle. Yeah, I'll make the motion. Second. 
Yeah, just discussion. This is really just to clarify and clear up what we had done last year when we appointed him for a year. We want the, the periods to align with the uh, the village's calendar year. So that's why we're making this adjustment here. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Mayor Manger appoints and requests a motion for the Board of Trustees to approve the following committee member. Environmental and Sustainability, Victoria Elenowitz, with a term expiring June 30th, 2024. Yes, I will make the motion. Second. This will bring to five the number on the Environmental Sustainability Committee. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, and that's all we have, sir. And now we'll go to public comment. Okay, we have uh, four public comments for today. Uh, first, uh, Mr. David Rung. Good evening. On February 20th, I attended my grievance hearing, my third one in the last three years. After my grievance hearing of two years ago, because of the deplorable treatment of my wife, the wife, what my wife and I received, I became much more involved in village governance. So, the, I, the, so if you think the monster standing before you understand that you created this monster. Today I received a letter <coughs> entirely denying my latest grievance. This is in spite of the fact that next door neighbors with properties worth a million dollars more than my property are assessed at lesser amounts than my property. You again entirely ignore incomparables even though lawsuits are being forced by these actions that are costing taxpayers, including look at resolution 29 in your packet today. If, if you would just negotiate with residents and settle these issues before the tax rolls were set, there would be no cost to taxpayers and the village would receive their full amount of money. But be assured that all residents who filed grievances will be informed of your despicable behavior as none of them, none of their friends, and none of them, their neighbors will ever vote for you again. I know you like to use New York State ratios to support your conclusions and the lies that you put on the village real estate invoices. But understand those ratios are provided assuming you are starting with fair market value, but you are not starting with fair market value. Using comparables is the only way to determine fairness and assess values. You are allowing yourselves to be deceived by Bill McCoy, a guy who was fired by Shelter Island, a guy who at 435 Roscoe Drive, a knockdown and rebuild that sold for $7 million, was assessed at $16,000. And 180, 148 White Street, a knockdown and rebuild, which sold for $7 million, was assessed at $46,000. And Len, I presented all that information with you. Have you checked those computations? Does anybody check the work of Bill McCoy? If they don't, that's a major accounting weaknesses. This administration continues to treat residents unfairly, puts the village at financial risk, and is costing and unnecessarily costing the village taxpayers. Thank you. Next. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Tortago, Mrs. Tortago, sorry. I'm not very experienced at this, so excuse me. But I live on Can you just state your name and Andrea Portago. And address for the record. I live at 140 Cooper's Farm Road. Thank you. And I'm here tonight because perhaps I'm ignorant of some of the facts, so perhaps you'll fill me in. But I understand from this photograph that I got in the mail that you're planning on putting an array of solar panels here on this uh, green area between Cooper's Farm Road and White Street. And this is a very important area because, well, first of all, it's open space. People, we're privileged here partly because of living in an open space area. And there's a herd of wonderful deer that I've been watching since I moved here. 
I see them in the winter fattening up. I see them with their newborn babies. They lie there. It's such a pleasure. It's such a life-enhancing uh, thing to see this. There's rabbits. There's a stray cats. There's all kinds of critters that use this area. The deer use this as a transverse to go north almost daily, mm -hmm. and they use it to come back south. If you put this, up, this array up, how, how do you expect them to cross over? With, if they have to go down to Windmill, they can't go down to Windmill. They can't go up Cooper's Farm with their newborn babies. Uh, people drive on Cooper's Farm uh, over 40 miles an hour, especially in the summer. So I'm here to say, living on this street, um, this, I, th I think this is not a good idea. I think perhaps a place like Moses Park, there's an area behind Moses Park. You, no one ever goes there. You never see anybody. You wouldn't see the array there. Um, there's nothing attractive about solar arrays. I used to live in California. I know this. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful idea to have a future thinking, you know, to how to best provide. Uh, but um, I think this, this particular place is, I would really like to voice my concern and um, my dismay if you go ahead with putting it up here. And why was this place and has it already been agreed upon? Is it too late to say something, or? We're, we're still working on, on the, the, the layout of that. Uh, and it's actually in that location because it's to offset uh, the police station and the ambulance barn so that they are gonna be net zero uh, with their energy uh, consumption for electricity. So it has to be in close proximity to those buildings because uh, you know of the cost of transmitting the the uh, the, the uh, energy created. What about some <clears throat> of the roofs that are not used? No, well, in that area. Yeah, we are actually putting it on the roofs of the ambulance barn, uh, as well as some uh, arrays are going to be on the actual uh, property of the uh, police station and the ambulance barn. So it's not a final design yet. We're still working on it. And we're going to try and, and minimize it as much as possible. But the, the goal really is so that we can get to net zero for the police station and the ambulance barn in the village. Which is great. But has anybody um, <clears throat> looked at how this would impact the herd of deer? Because it's extraordinary to live in a, in, right in a village. Every day you can have uh, an exchange with these deer. It's yeah. just, I can't tell you what it does, you know, to your soul. It sounds so corny, but it's... Yeah. It's really a it's a, it's it's life affecting this. No, I we I appreciate what what the, you know. I think all the board appreciates your your comments, and and we will take those into consideration when we try and figure out how best to achieve this this net zero that our goal is for the police and ambulance barn. And what about their babies? Who who is yeah. who is looking? Who is speaking for the deer herd? Anybody? Is there anyone who speaks for the deer herd? Like you have a tree committee. Do you yeah. have a, do you have you must have somebody for the wildlife who would ad advise you tell you that this is a very important uh, throughway for them there's no way for them to get north if yeah. you block this off well it's not going to be blocked off i can assure you it's, it's not, not going to be, be blocked, blocked off. off absolutely not absolutely not that's not the intention at all but to them this is going to terrify them there's no space left no, that, that the photograph not, is not accurate any that's longer that's not accurate it's not accurate any longer so so we, we're happy to talk to you further, but but thank you very much for coming in. That's, and raising that's not the concerns. final design. That yeah. was before it was. <clears throat> we're in the phase of working that out now. Is there anyone I personally can be in contact to follow this? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, it would probably be um, with the DPW department and, yeah. and you, mm -hmm. Gina. You could just leave a message in the mayor's office. Yeah. Thank you. Very thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> Just Thank your name you, and address um, for the records? Yes, please. Rob Coburn. I live at 345 Hill Street. Uh, I don't want to counteract anything that was just said, but I've done a little study on this. It's not why I came up to talk. In, the, in their native state with predators around in upstate New York and upstate New England, there are between six and 10 deer per square mile. We live in a place where there are 25 to 30 deer per square mile because we feed them and there are no predators. So I would just say there's lots of deer around. Um, 
but it's not why I came up to talk. Yeah. Uh, just throw that out for the record. Um, came up to say, and I think Sheila's going to follow me, the uh, Environmental and Sustainability Committee has met twice. Thank you for rounding out our uh, fivesome with Victoria tonight. Um, we're doing good work. Um, and I'm going to let uh, Sheila sort of steal the thunder on a big event coming up Saturday, which I think Robin's going to mention as well. Um, I would just say uh, thank you for appointing all of us. It is a great committee. Scott Rose, John Halsey, uh, Victoria, Sheila, and myself with Robin's guidance. Um, and I'd also just wanted to let the full board know something that I said to Robin uh, after our meeting yesterday, uh, uh, which is that um, whenever we are considering any construction projects on roads or streets uh, or thinking of repaving, I'm, I'm going to ask you please to find money, set aside money in the future budget just for local drainage structures. It's actually a critically important part to control runoff and keep it where it is as much as possible. So I know there's been some drainage structures added recently and others that have been renovated. Uh, the more we can do to return uh, groundwater locally at the source when, when rain falls uh, is a critical piece of the puzzle for uh, improving water quality in the village. Thank and you very I, much, Rob. I get to turn it over to Sheila. Yeah. Yep, I'm sure. Sheila? Good evening, everyone. Sheila Pfeiffer, 56 Hildreth Street. And I ask, echo what Rob just said. We're co chairs of the Environment and Sustainability Committee and very happy to be at work to help the village meet its goals that were mm -hmm. stated in that climate emergency resolution that was passed a couple of years ago. Um, and to that end, one of the first things that the mayor has proposed that we work on and support him in and do public ed education about is the community choice aggregation option for sustainable, renewable electricity for the village. This is something that the town has been working on for about two and a half to three years now, so many of you may be familiar with it. And um, the village is going to have a wonderful opportunity to piggyback with the town because the village in and of itself is not a large enough entity to do the um, aggregation, but they can piggyback, as the phrase goes, with the town. Mm -hmm. So there's a meeting about all this. I hope everyone will come on Saturday at 11 o'clock in the Southampton Cultural Center. It will be fairly brief, but very clarifying for all who want to know more. And just as a quick aside, I want to state for the record that my husband and I walk on at Moses Park every single day, so it is used, and we appreciate it as a passive park. It's a wonderful space. I wouldn't mind solar array there, but I'm just saying it is used, and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you. Have one more uh, in person, yeah. uh, Mr. John Bennett. This is about this solar um, array there. And I, I, people have contacted me, and quite candidly, I said I'm not going to get jump into that briar patch because. Um, but I did want to make sure. Um, I mean, I think it's a I think it's a policy decision to be made by the trustees. Uh, but I did want to <coughs> make sure that the appropriate appropriate procedure was followed. I don't know if any of the array touches those parkland areas that have been established in those two subdivisions, but they're unequivocally dedicated for parkland. So there's a, there's a way to do it, but it's quite clear, and I'll give this to council. It's the Court of Appeals of Friends of Van Cortland Park versus City of New York. They wanted a water treatment plant in, in the dedicated parkland, and the Court of Appeals the question was certified to the Court of Appeals of the State of New York from the Second Circuit Federal District Court. And the, the Court of Appeals held, though the water treatment plant plainly serves an important public purpose, which is, you know, the, the photo array worked here as well, and do you, even the State Attorney General believes it should be built at the site, our law is well settled. Dedicated park areas in New York are impressed with the public trust for the benefit of the people of the state. Their use for other than park purposes, either for a period of years or permanently requires the direct and specific approval of the state legislature, plainly conferred. So I don't know where it lies up with those. There's, there's mm -hmm. three park areas that are, there's one about 60 feet wide, and then there are two others that are clearly shown as park areas on the subdivision. I don't know if the array comes into that. 
-hmm. at all. There's, there's a way to do it, but I just want to make sure that the village doesn't get into a problem because I think you, you clearly would need the, uh, and it's done, yeah. uh, but you, I think you, if, if it touches those parklands, you'd need a legislative approval. That's, yeah. that's all. I'm not, I'm not taking position. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, John. I didn't sign up, but can I add to that? Sure. Jane Claire, 123 Cooper's Farm Road. And I'm here to um, also support the idea that this is parkland, and I have a handout for everybody that states this is parkland. Can I get you that? Get it with the clerk. Or, sorry, to the administrator. Thank you. Oh, from the research I've been doing, we can't take parkland and give it another purpose without going through the alienation and conversion of parkland mm -hmm. and I have um, been in touch with the state and there has been from what I can tell no request to alienate this parkland um, it's an impermissible use of parkland solar arrays and blocking off our green space just makes no sense I, I want to read a little bit doing some research and it suggested that solar be put in ground fields or rooftops, abandoned agricultural fields, dry lakes, even airports where wildlife are unwanted. They're also well suited for canals and hidden these reservoirs that are sometimes called float of Otis. They are not appropriate for parkland. Um, Another thing I'd like to read is that our, our job is to protect our scenic environmental resources by minimizing the impact of any kind of energy facility. And um, I also want to say I did some research that New York State, um, in New York City, um, went to the Court of appeals for an underground sewage um, facility in Parkland, and they were denied. So for me, green space doesn't equal green energy. To me, it would make more sense to put this on a sand dune than to put it into a green space. And my question for the board is, um, this costs $3.5 million for us to, as a village, pay for all these upgrades with new energy? I don't know the exact figure. Because I don't think we're saving money by putting this in our green space. We need to turn off the lights. I've approached several board members about my concerns. I've been to the building department several times, and I've been turned away that they know nothing. And I just don't like the feeling of living in the village and feeling like, so many other people, it's just, we have our blinders on. The only way we knew about this was something that was sent out in the mail. It hasn't been reported by the Southampton Press either. This comes in the mail. I don't think people know about this. And I don't think you, as a board, understand how much that parkland is used by our village residents. So I am here to um, say it's an impermissible use, and I don't think it can happen, and I hope it doesn't happen, and find somewhere else, please. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Anthony? That's all we have for uh, in person. Then we'll go into the public hearings. Sage, do we have oh, anybody sorry. online? Anybody online for public comment? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Hello. Hi, all. Uh, now coming through? No, yes, you're yes, coming you through are. loud and clear. Yeah, no problem. All right, great. 
Well, good evening. Could you just state your name and address, please? Sure. My name is John Stagnelli. I reside at 8 Carriage Lane, is the year-round resident. I'm a former president of the Dunes Homeowners Association, which is a 25-plus year old Southampton community comprised of 47 homes. We are in favor of the proposed truck route restrictions. In our community, there are many families and children. Often, residents can be found playing ball with their children, walking their dogs, pushing infants in strollers, or simply taking a walk or bike ride. The streets in question, Settlers and Village Lane, are a yep. known, popular, and heavily trafficked cut through no to avoid the corner yeah. of 39A and Hampton Road. Trucks too often frequently unnecessarily traverse our community, putting our little ones at risk. And even worse, at times when turns are amiss, most speed with dangerous shoe turns. We appreciate our village officials considering the protection of our family and putting forth this truck restriction proposal and approving <coughs> the same. We support the mayor and trustees efforts in this regard. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, so that, you know, that, that was a public comment for a specific public hearing. Um, I think maybe uh, we should, uh, unless there's anyone else that just wants regular public comment, we should go to the public hearings and speak on the individual uh, public hearings one by one. Do you have anyone else there um, at this point? <coughs> okay. Then why don't we go to the local laws, the okay. public hearings? Yeah. So we have um, five um, proposed local laws on for public hearing tonight. Four of them relate to changes to the code um, to sort of update and clarify the code with respect to um, pickleball and padel ball, which are relatively new sports. Um, so local law, num proposed local law number eight, number 12, uh, number nine, and number 11. Those are all related to it. Um, I'll just give you a brief overview. Two of them are just to um, change minor details like local law number 11 it's a amends chapter 116-32 it just simply takes um makes a small change to the uh review mandates of the uh, the architectural um, review and historic preservation board uh, the code currently says that tennis courts are exempt now it'll say instead of tennis courts it'll say playing courts um so the rest are the same pickleball, it's the same pickleball um, legislation. It just essentially, it's not unlike uh, the, the requirements for the accessory structures that's in 116-11. It's not unlike what we have now for tennis courts, but it will make, um, it'll require for a padel court or for a pickleball court, you'll be required to go in front of the, um, because of the, in, in front of the planning board for a site plan review. So um, that's all. If anybody has any public comment with respect to them, yep, one at a time. I don't know how we do that. Come on. Hi. Yeah. How are you? I'm Good. 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 Um, I am Elizabeth Takashignano with the law firm Sam Ward, Braff, Koblenz, and Kashignano, 333 Earl Ovington Boulevard, Suite 601, Uniondale, New York. Um, here with me today is my associate, Sam Bifolco, and we represent the colony at Southampton. Mm -hmm. So as you know, you previously received a few letters from our you know, unit owners. Uh -huh. um, they did reach out to my <coughs> office to represent <coughs> them here this evening. Um, and I know how hard you work. I'm chairperson of my own zoning board and I go before villages all the time. <laughs> so thank you for your, you know, your service to the residents. And you know, I would be remiss without saying it. I, I know it's a 24 seven job, right? So. I want to initially tell you that my clients are not opposed to pickleball in general or any sport played on a playing court as it pertains to the village. However, the local laws affect them directly. The colony is immediately adjacent to the Triangle Tennis Club, as you know. Um, it's in a multifamily residence district. Um, I don't have a copy of their certificate of occupancy, but I'm assuming they're a permitted non-conforming use in that district. While it may be non-conforming, it's still in a residential zone and should be subject to all the zoning laws affecting that zone, including setbacks. We don't believe this is the case. I, I'm sure you're very familiar with it and how it backs uh, my client's property. Um, we can only assume that in the future, if this law is adopted, the Triangle Tennis Club will apply for permission to convert their tennis courts to pickleball courts. Um, my clients are extremely concerned about this. 
Um, they feel it will be a great nuisance and detriment, um, you know, to their peaceful lifestyle. Um, you know, in a residential area where you have single family homes, a resident who wants to convert a tennis court or install a new one, it, it's quite different than converting a, 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 an existing tennis court that's not gonna require sound attenuation walls. And in a single family home, you're not playing 24 seven every day. You're working, you're playing an hour here and there, you invite friends on the weekend. This club will certainly request that um, opportunity to convert their courts because let's face it, it's extremely popular. The tennis club is gonna wanna you know, use this as an opportunity to, um, you know, have more revenue and it is a very lucrative sport it's it's all over the island it's uh, i'm from nassau all the golf clubs there's litigations all over the country regarding this and it, it's really very popular um again with respect to my personal clients they are already dealing with what's a generator there people playing padel already young people coming they're not always the best behaved so they're concerned that this is going to exacerbate um, if these laws are adopted and they're applied effectively to triangle tennis court as a non-conforming use. Um, there was a little confusion on my end because the numbers of the laws changed. So now what sure. was what was seven is now eight and what was eight is now 12, right? That could be. Yeah, so I just wanted to. If you want to make sure you're happy. Yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll check all of that. But okay. um, I think local law nine stayed the same. Um, they would request they would support either a moratorium against the construction and or conversion of the pickleball courts and paddleball courts or at least table the adoption of these local laws um, subject to further review um, and we did do a foil request i just don't know did the village do us an acoustical engineer a sound study do we know if that happened you mean on this local law yeah no no okay so um we feel before a legislative body takes actions towards amending the code, it has to be done with careful measure and transparency in according with the village's comprehensive plan. Um, to that end, I do have a FOIL request in um, to collect some of this data. I see that environmental's done. I saw the EAF and the full EAF. I don't have a copy of it, but you know the clerk you know assured me that eventually you know they'll get to it. They have a lot of requests. Um, but we feel without a professional acoustical engineer studying these noise, um, we're not certain that you can make a reasoned decision as to whether it should be permitted on residential and more importantly, on these non-conforming properties, such as Triangle Tennis Court. And if appropriate, I mean, and if permitted, what is the appropriate sound mitigation measure to protect the neighbor's right to their quiet use and enjoyment of their property? Um, the proposed mitigation measures as described in the local law 12 in section 116.9 requires 30 foot setbacks um, to the attenuation wall, um, but it only applies to new courts, not to existing courts. So in my case with the Triangle Tennis Court backing our property, they're definitely, they don't have that setback. They, they're supposed to have a 70 foot setback pursuant to the code, but they don't. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe they have a 30 foot setback to their courts either. So already uh, they'll be suffering a negative and environmental and physical impact just from that if that were to occur um we would propose that the village exclude the tennis club from the local laws proposed you have the power to do that if it if you feel it poses a detriment to the health safety and welfare of its residents um do you have the gps photo can i just hand this off to you so yeah you please give it to the uh, administrator so you could see like how close it is mm -hmm. to their rear yards. I'm sure you know, yeah. but um, one other thing that came up when I was doing some research is that you have a noise ordinance in um, seven, section 77.1. Um, and according to that or ordinance, noise pollution is the presence of that amount of acoustic energy for the amount of time necessary to cause a nuisance or interfere with the comfortable enjoyment of life and property. Further, the code states in part that yelling or shouting from private property at any time that annoys or disturbs the quiet comfort or repose of persons in the vicinity that can be heard from 50 feet is an example of noise pollution. 
So currently, the colony has been affected by the noise at Triangle Tennis Club, but if this pickleball is permitted there, it would certainly be exacerbated, um, and we feel in violation of the ordinance. Can you hand up the ordinance so that the board has it? Thank you. So, Local law number eight, which seeks to add pickleball courts to chapter 101 covering tennis courts, we also believe should be tabled um, in contemplation of, the, of an acoustical engineer doing a full sound study. Um, perhaps more importantly, there are a number of concerns relating to local law number 12, which um, concerns the requirements pertaining to pickleball and I'm not sure, is it paddle, padel, I, I don't Padel, know. padel, court, padel courts and playing courts. It does not, as I mentioned, specifically include a sound attenuation wall um, to, in, to ensure that the sound attenuation wall is placed 10 feet from the court. Then we would, we would suggest that the 30 foot requirement be from the court rather than the sound attenuation wall. So ju just so you know that that law has been, a, the proposed law has been slightly amended. It sounds like you're reading from an, oh, old, it has been? I, an I, old copy of the law. So I thought it, essentially, I don't know, um, the new proposed copy. law um, refers it to the planning board to determine what's necessary. For, okay. Uh, so on a case by case basis, yes, the setback uh, is going to be? Um, yeah. Not, it's not a setback. It's a, the, the sound the attenuation, attenuation issues that right. they'll decide what's appropriate. Um, sound attenuation. In terms, oh. In right. terms of mitigating the noise. Right. No, I'm talking about the setbacks. You're talking about resident, you know, just regular setbacks, 20 feet or 30 feet? Yeah, because it says um, it's going to be placed 10 feet from the court in accordance No, that's with, changed. That's on okay, so right. that's changed. Um, yeah. All right. She's talking about number 12, right? I don't know. But it's 116 dash, um, 116-9. Uh, right. Um, placement of accessory buildings, and I think it's paragraph, yeah. It's under sub 11. Um, and if you go down to what's new, is J would address Padel and Pickleball courts. Just so we're clear too, you know, um, there's, there's nothing right now that specifically mentions pickleball or padel ball in our code. Currently. It was, right, it was, yes. a, it was, it was always tennis. Yes. These are variations on tennis. So currently, a padel court or a pickleball court is treated like a tennis court because there was no differentiation in the code. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeking to differentiate in the code. So I'm not sure how it benefits your clients for us to put anything off. So what you're saying is that they're already playing pickleball on these courts? Correct. Yeah, yeah, they are. That's the issue. We're trying to address it now. Well, they're, they're at least playing padel. I don't know if they're actually yeah, playing pickleball. Uh, according to my clients at Triangle Tennis, they're not playing pickleball. No, no, but they're I'm just playing saying padel. We're not they're just playing padel. That's we didn't correct. Write this law because no, I, I get it. Uh, no, yeah. This is the entire village. I'm just saying yeah. there are pickleball. Pickleball is being played on what was tennis courts. Right. So they've been treated as tennis courts. We're trying to address an uh, existing like issue. issue with a mm -hmm. with a new and popular sport. Mm -hmm. So we can no understood, so, understood. Okay. And and again, my clients are not opposed to pickleball in residential and in the villas. They just their main concern is where they reside because of this tennis club. Sure, it's it's not you know the tennis club is there. It's a for profit place. You know, it's not like a village run place. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they're concerned that based on this law, they're going to seek permission to put this use there. They're non-conforming. They won't need a sound attenuation wall if they're non-conforming. And that's the biggest issue that they have. Well, they so. have a pre-existing non-conforming use there. So that'll be addressed if they try to make changes to it like any other uh, mm -hmm. business that tries to expand it pre-existing non Okay, that's fine. I just wanted yeah. to get all of that on the record for on behalf of my clients. Mm -hmm. Also, based on the comprehensive plan, I don't know if you have copies. I brought copies tonight. Um, I almost have it memorized. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So well, we have copies here anyway. I said make copies just in case. Um, you know, Chapter 3 speaks to quality of life concerns, um, and it highlights that public outreach was done, you know, it was recent, 2022, right? Yep. So residents emphasized the need to minimize impacts from residential properties on surrounding homes, such as impacts from noise and lighting, allowing the expansion and further proliferation of pickleball, 
would maybe conflict with those concerns, or as you stated, maybe it will help in terms of this local law, depending on who you are in the village, I guess, and you know where you live. Um, but with respect to um, with respect to that, there is something interesting. Um, your local law number nine, we don't feel um, comports with that plan because the proposed local law permits outdoor sports or activities between the hour of 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. Is that still the case? That's generally what the code says, yes. Okay. It, it, it doesn't, yeah, just. That's in the proposed local hours, law. Okay. Yeah. But. Now, what it, we're doing is adding pickleball and pedal ball. I know, I just. The code. I understand. Right. I understand. Okay. So, but it does contradict with the noise ordinance that says it's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And also, no illumination is going to be permitted on these courts. So, in our opinion, if you're not allowing illumination on the courts, how can you play till 11 p.m. if you're permitting that in your local law? So we would suggest just a revision of the local law to just say dusk to dawn rather than 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Because in, in our case, you know, why would you play after dusk if you're not allowed lights on your court? It, does, it just doesn't make sense. Um, so, so that would be our concern there. You know, we're going to we're going to wait for our, you know, foil requests to come back from Triangle Tennis. And hopefully, you know, we'll keep in touch with the village, you know, based on the fact that they're very concerned about this. Um, they are in an F MF 20 residential district adjacent to the colony at the condominiums. Mm -hmm. um, the zoning recommendations on 94 page 94 of the comprehensive plan acknowledge that there's a number of parcels zoned M MF 20 that don't conform to the code. Um, so basically, Triangle Tennis Court being in the MF20 district, normally, if you are conforming, you would have to have a 70-foot setback. But they don't. Obviously, they're non-conforming. So our main concern here is that they're so close to our residences and they're concerned that the permission of pickleball to Triangle Tennis Club will really detrimentally affect them. Um, let's see if I have anything else. So again, we would just urge the village to take a, a you know a very hard look at this, you know, possibly consider doing a sound study before approving uh, the local laws as proposed. Taking a look at you know the timing of per permission of play of all the sports, whether it's 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. The noise ordinance says 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and then it doesn't you know it doesn't permit illumination. So if you could just take a look at that, we would request that. Um, and that's that's all we have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is John Bennett, and um, I'm a member of Bennett and Reed at Two Twelve Windmill Lane. I, I I'm addressing these. I'm assuming we're just addressing all of these. Yeah, we were doing all four one, at, at one great. time. Yeah, thank to, you. For thank you. the purposes of, right, that Perfect, <laughs> thank you. Uh, my comments relate only to uh, my client at 260 First Neck Lane, Southampton, New York, which is a three acre parcel on the corner of uh, First Neck and Pond Lane uh, that always had two tennis courts on the property. One of them was removed uh, but there's nothing in the village code that speaks to abandonment of structures. The only abandonment sections that are in the village code deal with abandonment of uses, like a use that's not permitted. And of course, the tennis court is a permitted accessory residential use. And um, the village building department, who uh, typically I find in wonderfully fair, um, is refusing to issue a permit for a Padel court uh, in addition that could be added to my client's property at meeting 50-foot setbacks, more than adequately meeting setbacks in the area of that, um, that second tennis court that, that was on the property. Um, and so we have a situation where we, had a, we have a, a pre-existing non-conforming situation with two tennis courts on one property. One was removed temporarily during some construction, but there's nothing in the village code that talks about abandonment of non-conforming structures. 
as opposed to non-conforming uses. So the building department should really issue this. And again, I'm, I'm focusing only on as this law is being, uh, you know, applied to my client improperly now. One of the reasons the building department is saying that they don't want to issue the building permit is they think that it runs afoul of the limitation of two tennis courts on one property. And my answer to that is this is not the typical situation because there, there were two courts on the property. One was removed, but there's no abandonment section, as I said. But the other one is even if that weren't the case, um, the 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 definition of tennis court in the village code is 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 there is no definition of a tennis court. So so what what do you do in in that situation where you don't have a code section which specifically defines something? Um, it's this is I'm not making this up. This is the law. In the absence of a definition, you apply the common usage of the term. So for example, the architectural graphic standards edition. Uh, 10 by J. Uh, Hoke uh, provides separate and distinct architectural details for tennis courts, badminton courts, racquetball courts. We also enclosed an article in a letter that was submitted, what are the major difference in, differences between padel courts and tennis courts, discussing the significant and distinct aspects of the two separate sports. A padel court is approximately one-third the size of a tennis court. Uh, so absent any specific definition, the municipality has to use the common meaning there's no prohibition against um, a padel court and a tennis court. You can't just decide that a padel court <coughs> is another tennis court. And probably the best proof of that, as far as I'm concerned, comes out of a case that I, we, my firm litigated, in, involved the, the village. Um, and there were two neighbors that were arguing that the building inspector's manner of determining uh, the height of buildings, how buildings had to be elevated uh, in the flood zones. Uh, the neighbors were arguing that the building inspector had erred, uh, but at the same time, the village had adopted uh, a, a moratorium uh, in which they, um, they, they, they specifically said um, that the uh, law doesn't adequately control the height of the buildings. So uh, Justice Santarelio in the Supreme Court said that's the fact that you're having remedial legislation indicates <laughs> that your law doesn't say what you think it says. Um, and I submitted that, submitted that case. So I'm only talking about, I think this law is being prospectively uh, applied to my clients. We submitted the application back in February. Uh, we do a lot of development and permitting work, and we I took a pretty deep dive into uh, our applications for tennis courts for clients, most of them coming out of variances. But uh, the typical turnaround time is two weeks. So we're now at almost three times that. So my it seems, or my concern is that the... Uh, the the uh, the board uh, the the building department is uh, holding up the application until this law passes, which I think, by the way, because of the fact that I have a pre-existing situation with those two courts, wouldn't apply in terms of its limits in any way. But even if I didn't have that, I have an application for a Fidel court that meets the current uh, law, and it should have been issued. And I just don't think it's fair game to hold something up. Until, until a law passes. And then, again, since this is only one application, I know you have, there's another application that you have, but I was somewhat surprised that the board didn't follow what they followed in Local Law 14, 2023, uh, where they, con uh, that was the, you know, you know the f automatic front yard, you, cha you flipped. At first you needed a variance in the front yard, mm -hmm. And then you said you didn't need it on waterfront locks, and then you went back. But the, the board, I think, fairly uh, gave a grandfathering exclusion for property owners who had already filed a building permit. I think there were only two. And I think this one, you know, is on a three-acre residential lot. So I would, I would suggest that you exclude 
my my client who wants a Padel court, which is again not, doesn't have the same. I think I think Doug DeGroote proved pretty uh, emphatically that it doesn't have the same noise, and, and in, a, in a rather entertaining way that it still doesn't have the same noise effect as the uh, as the pickleball court. But I think we should have been this 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 um, this permit should have been issued uh, uh, under the existing law, and uh, it's been delayed. And I would ask you to grandfather it from the ambit of this law, because um, I think it's, I think my client's entitled to uh, in, entitled to this Bedell Court for the very for the reasons and very specific reasons, not just because he wants it, which of course he does, because everyone you know that's. Anything, anyone who's building any improvements on a piece of property, you could accuse them. Oh, he just wants that because they want they want it. Well, yeah, that's that's why people that's why people develop their properties. But I, I've given a very sound uh, reasoning uh, why the permit should have been issued. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else uh, want to comment on any of the pickleball legislation? Pickleball. Okay, you can make a motion to close these four public hearings on the pickleball Fidel Ball le le uh, legislation. Okay, I will make a motion to uh, close the public <laughs> hearings on the local laws <clears throat> pertaining to uh, pickleball and Fidel. Uh, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Roy. Okay. Now, the, 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 uh, the next local law is the only other one on the agenda tonight is local law number 10 right. of 2024. And we did hear from Mr. Uh, Scagnelli. We did. Just so we're clear, I just saw the, the record. It's a local law um, that um, amending Chapter 110 40, which is the truck weight limits on different, um, uh, it, it essentially adds commercial truck restrictions uh, within the village to certain roads. All right. And we do have the chief here if there are any questions about this as well. Thank you, chief, for being here. Okay. John, you want to speak again? Yes. Um, this is about an effect of, on my. A commercial property on uh, the corner of White Street and Windmill Lane, um, and the reason I became <laughs> aware of this is I, I, I take a great amount of pride in that property, uh, so much so that I, I, I remember former Mayor Romanowski knocking on my door one night when I was working late and saying to me, uh, "I'm going to put uh, a lamp, one of those green lamps, in front of your." office john and you're going to give me a check for five grand tomorrow because you're <laughs> going to pay for it <laughs> and we'll put a plaque there honoring your mom and dad <laughs> so so uh which i thought was pretty assertive effective mm -hmm. government so that so I, I, but i i i, I so, but I, I i drove into work one day and there was this really enormous you know commercial limitation sign right there uh right on top of my property and it really is you know, it's jarring and garish. So I, I would just ask you to take a look at that and see if there's some way that it doesn't have to be so. Uh, it, it really has a, a, an aesthetic effect on a piece of property that I've, I've taken great pains to uh, uh, to keep not only inside but the outside in, in very in very 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 good shape. Much to the expense, it's my own expense, but it, it, it's okay because I, I love this village. But the other thing I, I wanted to make sure, and this is um, this is very important to me. Is those are those are pre-existing non-conforming commercial buildings that I have there, and the two we call them the warehouses in the back um, are um, the tenants use um, trucks that are in excess mm -hmm. of these weight limits. So I just wanted to make sure I did I did write a letter um, to the village and included a case that I had litigated against the town of Southampton in terms of the interplay between pre-existing non-conforming uses and, and um, otherwise um, totally appropriate things that you can do under the vehicle and traffic law. So I just want to make sure that everybody, everybody understands that um, I, you, you, you can't keep my tenants from using no, no. yeah because it says local deliveries only and one of the tenants came over to me and says does that include me i'm not delivering i'm just <laughs> no. walking out of here so i just want to make sure that's that was my, my that was my only concern that's yeah. all yeah that's it. no it certainly does not include tenants that are on that street okay. john thank absolutely you. not and the chief will back me up on that right chief okay. thanks <laughs> <laughs> done we're in good shape okay. it's all done. thanks thank you thank you very much thank you, thank you john thank you john 
All right, so you can, anybody else want to be heard on that local law, uh, amending chapter 110-40? Okay, then I will make a motion to close that public hearing, uh, uh, local law number 11-2024. Sorry, that's the wrong one. Sorry, which one no, are we? Number it's that that's, right. it's uh, local law number 10 of 2024. Right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think there were any communications. No. 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 So we'll move on to suggest resolutions unless you have any other correspondence. No, board. that's it. There's no correspondence to okay. the board uh, for this evening. So we can move on to suggested resolutions. Okay. We're going to start with the first one. Resolve the claims for the warrant dated March 14, 2024, totaling $2,054,053.56. Warrant number A-17-general fund, 106,256 dollars and 36 cents. Warrant number H-10 capital fund, and 34,337 dollars and 78 cents. Warrant number A-18- CS trust fund are audited and approved. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees Board and the Incorporated Village of Southampton Village authorizes the village administrator to publish the notice of public hearing to be held on Thursday, April 11th, 2024 at six o'clock p.m. as a hybrid in-person Zoom meeting for the purpose of considering authorizing the village board to adopt a budget for the fiscal year commencing june 1st 2024 which may have a real property tax levy more than the tax levy limit as de defined by the general municipal law 3-c i'll make the motion second and just discussion this discussion. is something that we have to do uh by law we uh every year we have to uh have this and then uh, uh when we don't go over the tax levy limit we I believe we rescind this, mm -hmm. but uh, right. this is something that is just... Just gives you the option of going over it. Correct. And until the budget is finalized, we have to have this in there. So I will make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. No, number three is, whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Southampton is considering amending Section 101, Tennis Courts of the Village Code of Southampton by adding pickleball courts and whereas a public hearing was held by the village board on february 8th 2024 and continuing on march 14th 2024 at which time all persons either for or against said amendment were heard and whereas the board of trustees of the village of southampton has determined that this proposed local law is considered an unlisted action under six new york code of rules and regulations part 617.4 provisions of the new york state environmental quality review act and whereas the Southampton Village Planning Director prepared a short form environmental assessment form, parts one and a full environmental assessment form, parts two, dated February 6, 2024, which identified no or small impact may occur, and a full EAF from part three, which determined there would be no significant adverse impacts on the environment. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Board of Trustees hereby assumes lead agency status as there are no other involved agencies and issues a negative declaration pursuant to SECRA as there are no significant negative environmental impacts anticipated in the zoning amendment, and be it further resolved that local law number eight of 2024 is hereby adopted. That's your resolution. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, there's Thank also you. a resolution whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Southampton is considering a local law amending one, chapter 116 to address all plain courts and establish new standards and setbacks for same. This is the code we just had the public hearing on. Um, I think we can skip the verbiage. There was the same, it's, it's on the record for anybody who wants to see it. There was a, um, a secret determination by the board and the resolution reads, uh, now therefore be it further resolved that local law number 12 of 24 is hereby adopted. Yes, because it was referred to Suffolk County, uh, planning commission, uh, planning commission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they ruled that this was up for local determination. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Okay, so I will make the motion on this this uh, resolution. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. I mean, I can read the whole thing if you want on each of these or just minimize. No, I just wanted to make sure that people sure. realize that this had gone to the Suffolk County Planning Commission for it's determination. It's right on the agenda, everything. Yeah. Um, okay, the next resolution, uh, whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Southampton is considering amending Section 82-4 of the Village Code of Southampton by adding pickleball, pedalball, and paddleball to the list of sports and activities restricted by time in public and semi-public places 
And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Board of Trustees hereby assumes lead agency status as there are no other involved agencies and issues a negative declaration pursuant to SECRA as there are no significant negative environmental impacts anticipated by this zoning amendment. And be it further resolved that Local Law Number 9 of 2024 is hereby adopted. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then there's an abbreviated, uh, again, resolution on the truck weight limits. Whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Southampton is considering amending 110 40, Schedule 1, truck weight limits of Chapter 110 of the Village Code of Southampton to regulate commercial truck restri restrictions, where a public hearing was held tonight on March 14th. Um, we've complied with secret now. Therefore, be it resolved that the local law number 10 of 2024 is hereby adopted. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And now this resolution is um, also as stated in the agenda. I'll read the minimal amount of it. Whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Southampton is considering a local law amending Chapter 116-32, the procedure for application of public hearings for the Board of Ar Ar Architectural Review and Historic Preservation to grant exceptions to all playing courts. Um, again, this the board complied with SECRA. There's language in there about that. Now, therefore, be it resolved that, the, uh, that local law number 11 of 2024 is hereby adopted. That just exempts, uh, again, the playing courts as opposed to just tennis courts. From the ARB. From ARB review, right. Correct. Okay, I will make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is a series of um, notices of public hearings. So the first one is, be it hereby resolved that the village board hereby directs that a public hearing shall be held as a hybrid in-person Zoom meeting on April 11th, 2024 at 6 p.m. at the village meeting room at the village Southampton Village Hall located at 23 Main Street in Southampton to hear any and all persons either for or against a proposed local law entitled a local law amending chapter 116-2 definitions and word usage of the Village Code of Southampton by adding and amending definitions to support the code changes to dimensional regulations for residence yards, which residence yards. Um, that local law is available at the clerk's office for anybody's review. Um, I'll make the motion. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next one be hereby resolved that the village board hereby directs the public hearing shall be held as a hybrid in-person Zoom meeting on April 11th, 2024 at 6 p.m. at the village meeting room at the Southampton Village Hall located at 23 Main Street, Southampton, New York to hear any and all persons either for or against a proposed local law entitled a local law amending chapter 116-11.1 yard regulations in certain residence districts of the Village Code of Southampton by incorporating changes to dimensional regulations for residence yards to comport with the recommendations contained in the 2022 Southampton Village Comprehensive Plan. Again, that local law is uh, available for inspection at the Village Clerk's Office. Okay, I will make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next one is be hereby resolved the Village Board hereby directs that a public hearing shall be held at a hybrid in-person Zoom meeting on April 11th, 2024 at 6 p.m. at the Village Meeting Room at the Southampton Village Hall located at 23 Main Street, Southampton, New York, 11968 to hear any and all persons for or against a proposed local law entitled a local law amending Chapter 116-9.1 of the Village Code of Southampton to restrict basements and cellars to the footprint of the first floor of a dwelling as recommended by the 2022 revision to the village's comprehensive plan. Again, that code change, proposed code change, is available at the town, at uh, the village clerk's office, sorry. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. Discussion, I just wanna uh, say that this is not going to restrict uh, window wells or other means of egress from a basement or cellar. Uh, it is just really to keep the uh, basement or cellar within the confines of the first floor, but it does allow for, uh, again, window wells and other means of egress uh, to, for, for the structure that is allowed to go uh, beyond beyond the, uh, the uh, first floor plate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Next one, schedules a public hearing also be hereby resolved that the Village Board 
Hereby directs the public hearing shall be held as a hybrid in Zoom in person Zoom meeting on April 11th, 2024, at 6 p.m. at the Village Meeting Room at the Southampton Village Hall, located at 23 Main Street, Southampton, to hear any and all persons either for or against a proposed local law entitled a local law amending Chapter 116-17.1 of the Village Code of Southampton to include certain structures in the calculation of a lot's gross floor area and coverage as recommended again by the 2022 revision to the village's comprehensive plan. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, this um, is another local law. Be it hereby resolved that the village board hereby directs that a public hearing shall be held in a hybrid in-person Zoom <laughs> meeting on April 11th, 2024, at 6 p.m. at the village meeting room at the Southampton Village Hall, located at 23 Main Street, Southampton, to hear any and all persons either for or against a proposed local law entitled a local law amending Chapter 16 of the Village Code to further define the, quote, extraordinary circumstances, unquote, which might warrant a board member participating in a meeting of the public body by video conference. So this is just going to propose to amend what's currently um, the local law. And that's available at the clerk's office also. Yeah, so I will make the motion for this. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think that's all the local law notices. Okay, very good. Now we'll move to uh, some regular resolutions regarding uh, LOSAP. Let's do it. Resolved, the 2023 LOSAP retirement points listing of all volunteer fire department workers of the Southampton Village Fire Department has met the required posting requirements, has been certified by the Village Fire Department Chief and Manager, and is hereby approved. I'll make the motion. Second. 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 Oh, Royce was seconding Is that. It? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the 2023 LOSAP retirement plans listing all volunteer ambulance department workers at the Southampton Volunteer Ambulance Department has met the required posting requirements, has been certified by the Village Ambulance Department Chief, and is hereby approved. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees approves the Small Rural Tri Tribal Body Worn Camera Program grant application presented by... Craig Hyam in support of our initiative to request funding assistance for the 31 body worn cameras for the Southampton Village Police Department. I will make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees approves the Local Government Records Management Improvement Fund grant application presented by Jennifer Messiano in support of our continued initiative to digitize digital, digital records within Village Hall. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees approves William Manger, Mayor, to attend the NICOM annual meeting on May 15th to 17th, 2024 in Bolton Landing, New York. Registration, hotel accommodations, meals and travel expenses are estimated at $1,550.00. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees approves the attendance of the village officials to attend Suffolk County Village Officials Legislative Dinner and Awards Night on Wednesday, April 7th, 2024 at Hotel Indigo, Riverhead, New York from 6 o'clock p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. at a cost of $1,000 paid for by trustee special projects. Uh, I will make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees approves Kathy Sweeney, Village Clerk, to attend the annual New York State IIMC Region 1 meeting on March 23rd to 20, through March 26th, 2024, in Springfield, Massachusetts. Registration, hotel accommodations, meals, and travel expenses are estimated at $1,450.00. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees approves the purchase of Healthline Medical All-Terrain Beach Wheelchair for Cooper's Beach in the amount of $1,736.51 to be expensed out of Special Revenue Fund CS4863.400. I'll make the motion. Second. Uh, discussion. This is so that uh, Cooper's Beach will now have a uh, wheelchair that is uh, providing accessibility for uh, handicapped individuals to get to the beach uh, and on the beach with this special wheelchair with very large wheels and tires 
so uh, it is uh, in the in the interest of uh, of the, the public that we uh, allow handicapped individuals to access our beach at Cooper's Beach, and that is what this is for. So I will make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved. The Board of Trustees approves the following 2024 Cooper's Beach daily operations fees as follows. Daily parking pass, $50 each. Chair rental, $15 each. Umbrella rental, $20 each. Teak table, $10 each. Uh, I will make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved. The Board of Trustees approves the request from Christine Brennan and Brendan Regan to host the fourth season of the Village Lifesaving Programs, Southampton Village Junior Lifesaving Program and Adult Ocean Safety Ocean Safety Course to be held at Cooper's Beach for the 2024 summer season. Um, I, I will make the motion. Roy? Second the discussion. Okay. Um, I work closely with <coughs> Alex King and Josh Bolluri from Southampton Village Ocean Rescue last year, as there is some overlap in the program offered by the Southampton Village Ocean Rescue and Ms. Brennan and, and, Bren, and Bren, Mr. Regan's program. Uh, my understanding as we got into the issue was that Ms. Brennan and Mr. Regan were asked by then trustee Mark Parrish to establish a program uh, for young, younger Southampton uh, kids uh, to learn swimming and the basics of, of becoming a, a lifeguard. Uh, Southampton Ocean Rescue was established a few years ago, and they began a program uh, also to uh, serve as a pipeline for uh, developing uh, younger people to become members of their group and, and serve as, as lifeguards. And both people have done, both, both groups have done an outstanding job uh, and have gained uh, many compliments for the work they've done with the Southampton youth. Uh, both organizations uh, agreed to a compromise situation last year where Ms. Brennan's group would do the kids up to 14 and the mm -hmm. Ocean Rescue people would do kids 14 and over. There was an overlap at the age 14, which I'm not exactly sure why that happened, but the kids who are 14, I think, can elect to go to either group. I, would ha I may be wrong on that, but that is my understanding of this, of the compromise solution we worked out last year. So uh, I believe this resolution is just reiterating the solution we came with up last year. And I hope that is the case. And that is, if it's not the case, I think we should review it. But if it indeed is simply saying this, we're going to do the exact same thing we did last year, which from all, everything I heard from both groups worked out quite well. Uh, given that it was a compromise and nobody's ever 100% happy with a compromise, then I think we should do this. All right. Um, Alex King is, is here in the audience, the chief. Chief, did you want to say a few words? Because I think this is the same as last year. We, hi, I'm Alex King. Yeah. I'm the chief of Ocean Rescue. Um, we, would, we, we would just like to reiterate that we ran the adult program and we also we also ran the junior lifeguard program from age 14 to 16. Mm -hmm. So we would like to continue to do that. Um, there should be no overlap. It was supposed to be. It was. It was. Her program was stressed. Um, it's. It was like up to 14, and that was confusing. So it's better to just say 8 to 13. So it's very clear that we have the 14-year-olds. It's very confusing when the participants come to the beach and they don't know where to go. Um, we're not stealing her students. Um, we have sent plenty yeah. of people to her this year. Um, and also, it's really important that we maintain the adult program as those people also become our members. Mm -hmm. So um, that's all. Thank you. All right, Roy, um, it, what, what would you like uh, to do here? Well, as I stated, the Ocean Rescue does the adult program. Yeah. I, they did the adult program last year. There, as I said last year, there <coughs> there was a situation where the, for whatever reason, Brennan's group was up to 14 and the Ocean Rescue group was 14 and over. So the 14 year olds overlap. Now, if, if the board would like to make a decision tonight and establish one or the other, or just carry forth with the overlap for the 14 year olds 
like I said, there was a little bit of confusion last year, but in general, it worked pretty well, which, you know, as I said, it was a compromise solution, and nobody is ever 100% happy. But certainly, the Ocean Rescue Group did a great job with the adults, with everybody 14 and over, and the Brennan's Group did a great job with the younger. Now, uh, Village Administrator um, um, Anthony Turner, I, I ask you, because you can't, you don't want both of these groups trying to do things at the at Coopers at the same time. Perhaps you, I'm asking you to get both groups together and figure out a schedule of who's going to go where, when, and how in terms of uh, sharing the beach for each program's function. Now, if you can do that, Mr. Carter, that would be great. Well do, sir. Okay. I Trustee Zanotti, do you want to say anything? Um, I think that's a great uh, compromise, and I think uh, we should do that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I mean, the time and place. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm in favor for keeping it the way that it is because I know 14-year-olds, they may not feel comfortable with the adults. They may want to stay well, with the, the program. So I'm just... Sorry to interrupt, but okay. uh, in my family, there will be a 14-year-old, and I was having the same thought uh, <laughs> yeah. that she probably would prefer to be with the younger the, kids. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't really want to discourage them. So, Well, it, it, it may not be conceived that way uh, to a 14-year-old. No, we, we can't go back and forth. I, yeah. Okay. So I'm 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 okay with this uh, the way that it's written and follow it the way that it was last year as okay, long as there's the, certain boundaries as mm -hmm. uh, Roy uh, right. Trustee Stevenson mm -hmm. suggested and I'll and I'll make sure right. okay so, thank so you so Chief can you work with Administrator yeah. uh, Carter yeah. okay all right so with that then um, I'll, I'll I'll make the motion for this S second motion second, oh, okay. second. yeah he second all right okay Roy seconded all, all in favor aye. 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 aye okay all right thank you Alex excellent. Resolved, the Board of Trustees approves Lackland to seen as a probationary member to the Southampton Village Fire Department Hook and Ladder Company, effective March 14th, 2024. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Village Board of Trustees hereby approves the rate increase for Alice Cooley, ESQ, to serve as the attorney for the Board of architectural review and historic preservation at a rate of $235.00 per hour, effective March 14th, 2024. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees hereby amends resolution 2023-1924, approved on October 24th, 2023, increasing the total cost of the three solar benches from $11,985.00 to $12,570.00. The additional funding will be paid by trustee special projects. Southampton Association has donated $2,500.00 to help defray the total cost. Okay, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Whereas, as presented in the audited financial statements at the Board of Trustees work session held on February 20th, 2024, the Village of Southampton's fiscal 2022-2023 year-end resulted in a within a year operating surplus of $3.9 million, and whereas the fiscal best practices recommend that a large surplus to be used to fund reserves. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees directs the Village Treasurer to appropriate the operating surplus as follows. $2 million Two million dollars to be allocated to capital reserves to fund the 2024 through 2027 capital budget. One million dollars to be allocated to capital reserves for needed infrastructure and deferred maintenance repairs. Six hundred and fifty thousand dollars to be allocated to the employee benefit accrued liability reserve fund. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars to be allocated to the contingency and tax stabilization reserve. And be it further resolved. This allocation is subject to permissive referendum. So I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? I, I think this is a, a really best practice to, again, put money aside for, for capital uh, expenses that the village will incur going forward. It's also taking into account uh, an employee benefit accrued liability fund so that uh, when we have uh, retirements from the village, we're able to pay out the benefits that are required at that time, uh, as well as, um, again, putting $150,000 
in what we call Gina's Rainy Day Fund uh, for uh, the Tax table Stabilization Reserve Fund. So uh, this is an excellent uh, use of these, these, uh, these extra monies and uh, will go a long way to uh, improving uh, you know, the, the stability and financial uh, uh, health of the, uh, of the village. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd, I'd like to also yes, say ma'am. that uh, you know, I'm happy that we're, that we're able to use the, uh, the results of uh, our strong financial management over the past 12 months, this $3.9 million surplus. Uh, and it is best practice to uh, fund it with one-shot expenses, which will include for us critical infrastructure projects mm -hmm. uh, and deferred maintenance repairs. Uh, and that total of $2 million that will go into the capital reserve to be used in the future. However, the $1 million will be immediately used for critical uh, projects like repairing the roof of Veterans Hall and repairing the roof of the Arts Center. And I think it's also important to continue the funding of the Contingency and Tax Stabilization Fund uh, for the uh, surety of the, of the village in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Len. Um, so, uh, we uh, all in favor? Had, had a resolution, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Whereas, as presented in the audited financial statements as at the Board of Trustees work session held on February 20th, 2024, the Village of Southampton fiscal 2022 through 2023 year end resulted in a within year operating surplus of $3.9 million. And whereas, Fiscal best practices recommend that a large surplus be used to fund reserves. And whereas the Village Board of Trustees would like to see the World War I Memorial Monument restored and have already received many gracious donations for the restoration of the World War I Memorial Monument. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Trustees directs the Village Treasurer to appropriate $100,000 and zero cents of the operating surplus to the World War I Memorial Monument special reserve fund to match donated funds and therefore be it further resolved this allocation is subject to permissive referendum uh, I'll, I'll make the motion i'll second that discussion uh just so i'm very happy about this uh privately we've raised uh close to a hundred thousand dollars uh for a what's probably going to be close to a four hundred thousand dollar project to restore the world war one monument i've been working on this myself a couple of years uh, currently, we have our uh, village historian working together uh, with a, um, uh, the grant writer and uh, a, a report that has to be made so we do this properly, uh, the restoration of the uh, monument. And with this uh, report that's, got, that's being generated now, hopefully we're going to be able to get grant money to um, um, pay for the rest of the uh, restoration. So as soon as that comes, we'll start making uh, plans to uh, get the restoration started. So I'm, I'm very happy about this, that the village is able to do this. Yeah, it's excellent. It's going to help jumpstart the fundraising, we hope, again, uh, as well as, again, some additional grants that we may be able to receive uh, because we really would like to uh, complete the full restoration of that monument. Uh, it actually was 100 years last year, 100 years old last year, and uh, we would really like to see it uh, back in tip-top shape uh, as soon as possible. So thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved. The Board of Trustees directs the Treasurer's Office to make the following budget modifications from budget line A.5110.44 highway contractual services in the amount of $50,000. Budget line A.1620.42, building maintenance, utilities in the amount of $23,000. Two, budget line A.5110.41, highway, supplies in the amount of $50,000. Budget line A.1620.44, building maintenance, contractual services in the amount of $23,000. Okay, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees authorizes the village attorney and village assessor to enter into a stipulation to settle an Article 7 tax lien litigation between the village and Isabel and Wadi Jordan, LLC, related to property located at 94 Main Street, Southampton, New York, and further identified on the Suffolk County tax map at 
0904-006.00-04.00-001.000, said settlement reduces the annual assessed value by the amount of $6,556 for each tax year's 2011-2012 through 2012-2013, $8,660 for the tax year 2013-2014, $10,066 for each tax years 2014-2015 through 2018-2019, $11,066 for each tax years 2019-2020 through 2023-2024 at a total cost to the village of $25,578.74 as identified in a proposed stipulation negotiated between the village assessor and Cronin and Cronin law firm, PLLC, attorneys for Isabel Wadi Jordan, LLC. Okay, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees approves the 2024 Southampton Chamber, Chamber of Commerce events listed Saturdays, April 28th through September 15th. Farmers and Artisan Market held at Agawam Park from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Tuesday, October 1st, Paint the Town Pink and Kick Off Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Tree lighting ceremony held at the front entrance of the Southampton Chamber office at 6.30 p.m. Saturday, November 28th, the 28th annual Fire Truck Par Parade of Lights in conjunction with the Southampton Fire Department commencing at dark at 4.45 p.m. This event is also in conjunction with the Village Decorating Committee Tree Lighting Ceremony at Agawam Park at 5.15 p.m. Saturday, December 7th, Southampton, It's a Wonderful Village, consists of all-day events to shop, dine, and stroll Southampton Village. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees approves the Rotary Club of Southampton to hold its 33rd annual Firecracker 8K walk slash run on Sunday, July 7th, 2024 from 7.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. with the start and finish at Agawam Park. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolved, the Board of Trustees approves Massapequa Park bike club to host its 2024 tour of the hamptons on sunday september 22nd 2024 from 6 a.m through 6 p.m this event is expecting 700 participants the start and finish will be at southampton high school i will make the motion second all in favor aye, aye. aye. okay we uh i'd like to make a motion to introduce two walk-on resolutions uh added to this evening's um Meeting. Do I have a uh, a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. So, do you want to read these? You want me to read these? Yeah, I can read okay. them, sir. Okay. We have two walk-on resolutions. First one: Resolved, the Village of Southampton hereby authorizes the mayor or his desi designee to execute any and all documents pertaining to the 2024 Town of Southampton Community Preservation fund water quality improvement program application to support estimated project costs associated with the sewer project. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Resolved. The Board of Trustees concurs with the Suffolk County Civil Service Desk Audit Authorization Letter and approves promotion of Brennan Rack as maintenance Mechanic Level 1 of the Highway Department to a salary of $50,983.43, retroactively effective as of, should be, January 30th, 2024. Okay, I will make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that concludes the, uh, the meeting, uh, but at this time I would like to uh, uh, adjourn to executive session for discussion of uh, legal and contractual matters. Oh, sorry. Comment. Yeah, we should do that first. I you apologize. Want to that? You want to comment? <laughs> yes. All right. We will start with uh, uh, Trustee Arresto. Okay. Thank Please, you, Please, I apologize. Mayor. That's that's quite all right. You should thank me. You, you, you should yes. thank me. <laughs> that's thank right. You. I was going to let that go. But right. um, just a couple of updates. Everybody can see what's going on in uh, behind Village Hall here. Uh, they're working 
Well, the curbing is done in the uh, West Main Street parking lot. Uh, they're working on the plantings now, uh, the, with all the biospells that are going in on the islands uh, in the parking lot, and uh, after which they will um, they will be paving. So just be on the lookout for, we don't have dates yet on the paving, but just be on the lookout, it, it's coming soon. Uh, but later on this week, they will be p uh, um, paving behind Village Hall. So that notice is going to go out. It's uh, Hopefully it's going to be Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, and hopefully, but we know what happens with weather and things like that. So just be aware that there's a lot of things happening in the West Main Street parking lot. Uh, I'm just going to piggyback a little bit about what Rob Coburn brought up before about the, the drainage. Uh, we're working diligently on the drainage, and I've been speaking about that. We, uh, we redid a lot of drainage on Hill Street. Uh, we, uh, this morning, I pointed out to um, Steve Phillips, there's some areas on the other side on Little Plains that also have to be taken care of. Um, and uh, all of that, it, it's necessary to take care of this because we don't want that water to should be drained properly, not run off into our uh, uh, water bodies. Um, and that's also has to do with all the bioswales that we're, we're um, uh, doing around uh, the village as well. Uh, also this morning, uh, Old Town, uh, by Old Town Pond, they finished the parking area there. It's uh, permeable parking. And underneath the, um, the, what you see on the top is all stone. So this was to catch the water before it goes into uh, Old Town. So um, we've been waiting for that. We, we, they worked on that last uh, fall, but they couldn't finish the parking area, which is, um, if it wasn't finished today, it should be finished by uh, tomorrow. So those are the things that, uh, uh, that they're working on currently. And another thing that's going to come up very shortly within the next couple of weeks is uh, the change of uh, traffic pattern. Well, on Hill Street, mm -hmm. it was changed yes. tra traffic yeah. pattern. Yeah. So Hill Street, uh, Viridian Way, and uh, First Neck. Uh, there's, um, it's a little dangerous there to cross that street because of the traffic that's coming out of Viridian Way, the traffic that comes out of First Neck. You have to almost go into uh, the street itself in order to see if you can make a turn either way. <clears throat> Uh, so uh, the traffic engineers uh, designed uh, an, an island, uh, a turnaround, and a designated turning lane. So uh, this will also help with the traffic or to keep the traffic moving on Hill Street so it doesn't back up into uh, Windmill Lane, which it does because of that particular corner. Uh, the, um, so as I said, there will be a designated changing lane and then a pass-through lane to the right of it. So with an island in the middle, so you can make a left-hand turn coming out of a radium way, and uh, you will also be able to walk across the street safely because there will be a um, crosswalk there and a little uh, spot to stand in uh, in case you make it halfway through Hill Street and you're not sure about making it to the other, uh, the other side. So that's uh, going to probably be within the next two weeks. I don't have an exact date on that, but there, you could see the markings there, and uh, that's going to take place soon as well. And I think that's uh, just about all the uh, the updates and everything else I discussed before. So thank you. Okay, Trustee Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. I am excited to be able to share this information and extend another invitation for everyone to attend this March 16th at 11 a.m. Saturday at the Southampton Cultural Center and there will be a presentation. We'd like to have all in attendance. We want to be clear and have time for questions and answers in regarding the community choice aggregation, exactly what it is, what it is that it allows municipalities to aggregate energy demand and negotiate bulk purchase of eligible residents and small businesses. We do know in, a, in uh, 2030 that the clean energy standard aims to source 70% of electricity from renewable sources. So now's the time to begin the conversations on how these things are done. The presentation and discussion will be led by the CCA reps and local leaders. It'll be a panel discussion. It'll be Sheila Pfeiffer of the Environmental Sustainable Committee, Lynn Arthur from the Sustainable Southampton Green Advisory, 
Committee and founder of Peak Power. It'll be Jessica Stormback, CEO, Jewel Community Power. And so we do hope that all can attend. It's important that you're aware of what's going on because it is your choice and it is your opportunity to be totally educated and asking questions. Thank you so very much and have a pleasant evening. Thank you, Trustee Brown. Uh, go to Trustee Stevenson on the phone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'm down in Florida visiting my daughter and uh, it's, I miss my village. Not that much, <laughs> but a little bit. Um, <laughs> but it's fascinating to me that down here in, in Naples, which is a beautiful uh, small city, they have almost exactly the same problems as we have in Southampton. <laughs> Development, traffic, ecological, Pick environmental. Pickleball. Uh, pickleball, exactly. <laughs> triple, triple pickleball oh, yeah. down here. It's like the pickleball capital of the world. <laughs> um, and in fact, there is a, uh, a big election coming up in, uh, I think, three or four days next week between uh, sort of the person identified as the development candidate and the person trying to keep things the way they once were a candidate. And it's, it's very interesting to see, just on a larger scale, what we are dealing with in Southampton. And uh, interesting to note that I feel, watching it down here and seeing what we're trying to do in the village, that uh, we are taking many, many good proactive steps to, to ensure that uh, we, we keep our village uh, the way that we would like to see it. So that's great. <clears throat> I do miss you. I will see you uh, at the next meeting in person, and I look forward to being there. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Stevenson. We'll go to Trustee Zanonti next, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to welcome Jeannie Strulis to the uh, Planning Commission. I'm convinced that her energy and experience will contribute to the good work of the Planning Commission. And I would like to especially congratulate Julie Crudup on her appointment as village treasurer. Uh, I've been working with her for several years as chair of the Budget and Finance Committee and of course now as trustee. And uh, I en enjoy working with her. She has grown under the mentorship of Charlene Kegel Betts, who is retiring as of tomorrow. And uh, I wish Julie uh, all the best in her new role with the village. Um, I want to uh, emphasize uh, Trustee Brown's invitation to, uh, to come to March 16th and learn about renewable energy and what choices uh, might be available to the residents of this village uh, and understand the economics of what choices they make. I think it'll be a, a very valuable uh, endeavor for us all. And thank you, Trustee Brown, for your leadership in this. I also want to say thank you to the Southampton Arts and Center for their imaginative programming and art uh, exhibitions. Uh, the look at the book uh, uh, exhibit that they have now is fantastic, really good imaginative program, programming by Christina uh, Strasfeld and Joe Diamond, uh, and uh, encourage all of our residents to go see that wonderful exhibit. And lastly, I'd like to thank the Cultural Center for the recent successful art ex exhibit that they had. Uh, I'd like to thank Danielle Leaf, Diane White, and Jean Maloney for their hard work in putting this together. And thank you and good night. Thank you, Trustee Zanonti. So I would just like to say that the village continues uh, with some of its infrastructure uh, improvements. Again, uh, some of this has not been uh, taken care of in quite a while, uh, so we're playing catch up here. But uh, the village hall uh, exterior restoration continues. Uh, for those that uh, are curious as to what's going on with all that big, uh, uh, you know, scaffolding out front, we are actually uh, abating the lead paint that was used on this building. This building dates back to 1911. Uh, and so we are doing that. But at the same time, uh, we are in-house uh, using members of our DPW staff to uh, replicate the trim, which is very detailed on this building, uh, and fabricating it again uh, out of wood. Uh, to replace areas that had deteriorated, uh, and then we will be repainting it with lead-free paint uh, later on uh, this year. But it's a big project, uh, a necessary project for the health and safety of everybody, and so that is one, one project that is ongoing with a, uh, a professional team on the exterior of the building. Uh, I also want to announce 
uh, for those that did not hear, that uh, I got a call from uh, Congressman Malota this week, as well as Senator Schumer's office this week, that the village is the recipient of $1 million from the federal government. It was signed into law by President Biden uh, last Friday, uh, and that is for our sewer project. Uh, and so that is a great uh, additional uh, monies coming in for our, our you know, clean water projects here in the village so that we will be able to bring uh, a, a sewer to the central business district. And finally, I just want to mention that uh, I'm very thankful to the Chamber of Commerce for inviting me to speak at a breakfast next week that they're hosting at the Public House on Job's Lane. Uh, that will be next Thursday morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, and, uh, you know, people can reach out if they're interested in, in attending that to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we want to reinvigorate the relationship between the village and the chamber so that, again, we can uh, boost everybody's uh, business here in uh, the village of Southampton. So uh, that will be on the calendar for next Thursday morning at 9 o'clock at the Public House. Um, and with that now, I will adjourn to executive session to discuss legal and contractual matters. Thank you very much, and uh, good night for now.